What's going on, AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. Huge news this week, guys. Brody Grundy is out for two to three weeks. So, in this video, I'm going to be covering what are the options there. Do you look to trade? Do you look to hold? Along with some other trading guides and principles to follow during the buy periods. Stay tuned for a huge video. So, news emerged, I mean, we did think, or having seen him get subbed out last week, that it was going to be the potential for him to miss this week, or miss a few weeks. The news has come out that he will be missing two to three weeks, so what does this mean for your fantasy side? There are a few options and ways that you can look at this situation. So, I just want to start off by saying that you can both trade or hold him. Both options are viable depending on your situation or circumstance and how the rest of your side looks. Because it is the buy period, only your best 18 scores count. So if you've managed and planned well for the buys and potentially have 19 or 20 players playing, then it could be a good idea to hold Grundy as you will have the leeway to do this. And if you decide to hold Grundy, you're essentially saving yourself two trades as well. He's a clear top two ruck, if not the number one ruck. He's a must have. And if you trade him out, you're only gonna have to bring him back in. So you're using the two trades there. In saying that, I do think there's merit to trading and there is merit to holding too. So we'll jump into the options. First of all, trading. So clear, obvious go-to guy is Max Gorn. It's pretty much a straight swap. I think you bank yourself 3K. Gorn is obviously the best ruck now that Grundy is out. Obvious clear swap there. So if you can do that and still get the rest of your team sorted, potentially get another upgrade or bang some cash for next week, then that's the obvious move. The next two options are for guys that are looking to trade and they already own Max Gorn, or they have other issues in their side which they need to patch up as well. So, Sean Darcy is the next best option in my opinion. Going Grundy to Darcy nets you about 130k, which is a, roughly the same as doing a rookie downgrade. So it gives you a good amount of cash, which you can then use to get an upgrade elsewhere. The fact that Darcy has forward ruck dual position, the forward line is slim pickings this year. And I think Darcy's capable of holding an average that puts him very close to being a top six forward. So he's one that you can flick forward and then upgrade a forward or a mid or whatever suits up to Grundy later. I think this is the play that I'll be going down as I have Fantasia as well. I briefly touched on this in my last video, stating that Fantasia will be going under surgery. He's a must trade for me, so I'll need the cash to upgrade him. That's why I'm looking to trade Grundy. I also don't have any backup options, which I will talk about in a second. But the third option is Riley O'Brien. I don't like this option as much purely because he's ruck only. But in saying that, Bounced back last week with a 97. He has been very underwhelming this year. And as an owner, I can voice my anger on how disappointing he really has been. But in saying that, he has gone through all the tough ruck opponents now. So his draw from now on is pretty sweet. 
He also comes up this week against Collingwood, who now don't have Brody Grundy. So he should be in for a good score this week. And bloody hell, he's cheap at around 580k. So that trade nets you about 200k, and, and you can get a decent upgrade elsewhere. But I think I prefer Sean Darcy. He's 100k more, but he has the forward status, which in my opinion is huge. As for holding Grundy, if you've got Flynn or Reeves on the bench, I think a hold is viable. So whilst Flynn and Reeves both have the bye this week, I expect especially Flynn to play next week and therefore you can use him to cover Grundy for the next couple weeks until Grundy returns. Reeves is a little bit of an iffy one, so he has the bye this week also, but there's no guarantee that he will return after the bye. I'm expecting that he will, but there's an off chance that he won't. But I think you can still take that punt if you've got enough players on field this week. And if he doesn't get named after the bye, you can then go with another plan for Grundy. But I think that both those guys, if you have those guys, then holding Grundy is certainly a potential move. What I wouldn't be doing is trading in Reeves this week as your plan for dealing with Grundy, only because there's no guarantee that he's going to play. And if you trade him in this week and he doesn't play after the buy, then you're in trouble. You've essentially paid 250k for a non-playing rookie, which doesn't then help out your buy structure or dealing with the Brody Grundy donut. So that's something that I personally wouldn't do. If you want to get on Reeves, I'd wait until after his buy and see if he gets named first and then jump on board. As for other ruck options, I don't think there's really anything else that's viable. This is what I'd be looking to do. Hold if you have Flynn and, and Reeves already potentially. I mean, you can still trade. It's going to depend on what your buy structure looks like and what you can do with the cash that a trade will free up if you decide not to go with Gorn. Gorn is the obvious, but then Sean Darcy also provides a great option. And if you're feeling a bit adventurous, Riley O'Brien is very cheap and does provide a lot of cash for you to then upgrade elsewhere. So those are the guys that I'd be looking at and really the only options that I think are viable. If we focus on trading through the buys in general, you want to be following the same principles that I preach throughout the regular season. You want to be doing a downgrade upgrade. The idea is to come out of the buys in a better position to when you went in. So you want to be finishing the buys with less rookies on the field, potentially no rookies on the field, and in saying that, you want to have your list of target players ready. So you want to know which guys that you're looking to get on. And you want to have a plan of action in terms of how you're going to achieve that. So for me personally, I need round 12 players. And I also need to get rid of some round 12 guys. So for me, I've got Fantasia who I need to get rid of. I could go to a round 13 or round 14 player. They are playing this week. It gives me one extra on the field. But as it stands, I'm already going to have 19, potentially 20 players on field. So I don't need an extra playing guy this week. So I'm looking to trade Fantasia to another round 12 guy, which will then benefit me through the next two weeks. So that guy for me is potentially Dan Houston. He's very underpriced at the moment. Um, it's not confirmed that I will be doing that, but it's an option that I'm looking at for sure. I then am looking to target Lockie Whitfield next week. Ollie Wines potentially, despite his high price tag. More for the fact that he's got that unique ownership and I'm looking to really get some point of differences in. He's very low owned in the top 50 coaches, so that will give me an edge, hopefully. Some other guys that I'm looking at are Neil 
and Dangerfield should be back from injury during the buys. So they are guys that I'm looking out for. There's plenty of guys out there. These are just some guys that I'm looking at that help my side, but it's going to be different for everyone as everyone's team has a different structure and or they're in a different situation. So have your list of guys that you like. I also like Christian Petraka. He's getting cheap. Uh, Isaac Heaney's a good buy this week. But what you don't want to be doing is sideways trade premiums, guys. You're going to get points. You're going to make up points doing it. But over the long term, over the long run, it's going to be bad for your team. Essentially, you're not improving by doing this. So what I'm talking about, for example, is say you've got Tim Taranto, Tom Mitchell, these round 12 buy premiums this week. What I wouldn't be doing is, say, trading a Taranto to a McRae or trading a, a Tom Mitchell to a Bontempelli because essentially you're then bringing in someone who's then not going to play next week. And in doing that, you're going sideways, you're not generating any cash, and you're not improving your side long term. So you want to be looking, especially with the three trades, you can afford to do one downgrade and two upgrades or two downgrades and one upgrades and make sure you're really focusing on bringing in someone that you're happy with and someone that you want to keep for the long term. I'd be focusing on targeting guys at this point that you think are a top in their position or close to. So say as a midfielder, you really want to be bringing in guys that you think are top 15 to top 20 at the least, defenders top 10, forwards top 10, all around that mark, okay? So they're the guys I'd be looking to focus on bringing in, and that's the sort of way that I'd be looking to trade. Early trade plans for me at this stage, Grundy to Darcy, I'll then be trading Kaczynski, down to a rookie that gets named Madden at this stage, but if a 170 gets named or there's other options, I will look there. And then Fantasia to Dan Houston. That's what I'm looking to do at this stage. I also have my next two rounds worth of trades planned out as well, but obviously I'm not going to talk about that right now because anything can happen there. We saw with injury this week, could be injuries next week. And that's the other thing you guys need to consider too, is you want to be aiming to have 19 to 20 on field each week. And this gives you some leeway in case you do have injuries, so you can field the 18 at a bare minimum. Ideally, you want 19 to 20 though, because it's going to give you that ability to have one or two scores drop out of your total, which can be really helpful in getting 20, 30, 40, potentially more extra points on some other guys that only have the 18 players. This is going to really help you climb up the ranks. So that's some tips in terms of what I'd look to do with my trading and what I'm looking to do with Grundy personally and what I think you guys should do as well. So if you've enjoyed this video, if you found this video helpful, Make sure to drop a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel, guys. Comment below what you're thinking to do with Grundy. Potentially some guys you're looking at and what your trades are looking like. If you've enjoyed this video and or like AFL fantasy content, subscribe to the channel, guys. And until next time, keep climbing up the ranks. Look. I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to save my peace, I'm so after school special. She brainy, but.